So friends, is the money bond that Donald Trump posted to stop New York Attorney General Letitia James from seizing his properties, is that money bond about to implode? Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, earlier this week, did you see how Donald Trump was congratulating himself, boasting and crowing about how he'd been able to come up with a bond for $175 million to stop New York Attorney General Letitia James from seizing his properties? Well, based on some new developments surrounding that bond, might Donald have to uh, eat a little bit of that crow? Let's start with the new reporting. This from CNN. Headline, New York Attorney General questions out-of-state underwriter of $175 million Trump bond. And that article begins, the New York Attorney General's office is raising questions about the $175 million bond Donald Trump posted in the civil fraud case and has asked for more information to prove it's financially sound. Trump filed the bond Monday night after gaining a reprieve from a New York appeals court that lowered the amount Trump needed to post from $464 million to $175 million. The lifeline gave Trump more time to obtain a bond after telling the court that 30 underwriters refused to back a bond for nearly half a billion dollars. And friends, can I pause there for just a second? Because what the appeals court in New York did was deliver a gut punch to the notion of the equal application of our laws. Without explanation, without analysis, without citing a single case of authority or precedent, the New York appeals court said, not to worry, Donald. We will reduce from nearly half a billion dollars to just $175 million, the amount of the bond you'll have to put up, right? It's like the New York appeals court was engaging in some kind of a fraud forgiveness program for Donald Trump in a way they wouldn't do for any other litigant. You know, equal justice is still licking its wounds behind that. All of that is my editorial edition. Let's go back to the article. The Attorney General's office, led by Democrat Letitia James, on Thursday took a step to challenge the soundness of the deal, that is the $175 million bond that was posted, and filed a notice of exception to the sufficiency of the surety to seek additional information from Trump or the underwriter about the bond because the insurer is not regulated by the state of New York. Judge Arthur N. Goran set a hearing for April 22nd. Okay, friends, let's just take a quick look at the notice of exception filed by Attorney General James. Please take notice that pursuant to New York law, plaintiff, the people of the state of New York, by Letitia James, Attorney General of the state of New York, hereby takes exception to the sufficiency of the surety to the undertaking given by defendants Trump and denoted as bond number so-and-so issued by Knight Specialty Insurance Company, a non-admitted carrier in the state of New York, without a certificate of qualification, upon appeal to the appellate division, first department, filed on April 4, 2024. Please take further notice that Pursuant to New York law, defendant Trump or Knight Specialty Insurance Company shall file a motion to justify the surety within 10 days of the service of this notice, failing which the bond shall be without effect, except that the surety shall remain liable on the bond until a new undertaking is given and allowed. So Attorney General James is challenging this bond, this bond that was put up by 
Knight Specialty Insurance Company. So a natural question is, okay, what is this Knight Specialty Insurance Company all about? Let's go back to the CNN article. On Monday, California-based Knight Specialty Insurance Company agreed to underwrite the bond. Don Hankey, the chairman and majority shareholder of Knight Specialty Insurance, told CNN on Tuesday that Trump provided $175 million in cash as collateral for the bond. Okay, friends, so now we have to ask, just who is this hanky fella? NBC News asked that question recently. Headline, who put up Trump's $175 million bond? A subprime car loan billionaire who has run afoul of regulators. Don Hankey made a fortune building a subprime auto loan empire. Along the way, his companies racked up consumer complaints, regulatory fines, and were sued by the Department of Justice because, of course, that's who put up the $175 million bond for Donald Trump. That NBC News article begins, providing Donald Trump's $175 million appeal bond when other insurers wouldn't is business as usual for California financier Don Hankey. As chairman of the Los Angeles-based Hankey Group of companies, which includes an insurer, a subprime auto lender, and the commercial real estate investment firm, Hankey has amassed a fortune lending to borrowers other financial firms shun. Hankey's assistance to Trump has brought the little-known billionaire into the spotlight. But in recent years, several of his company's operations attracted the attention of the U.S. Justice Department, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and the California Department of Insurance. Since 2015, regulators have taken action against Hankey's companies four times, public records show. Some of the highlights? In 2017, for example, the Department of Justice filed a complaint in federal court in California against Westlake Financial, Hankey's big subprime auto lender. With a network of 50,000 car dealerships and $3 billion in managed assets, Westlake Financial calls itself the Yes, Yes lender. Westlake and its subsidiary, Wilshire Commercial Capital, the DOJ complaint alleged, illegally repossessed at least 70 vehicles owned by military service members, protected under the Service Members Civil Relief Act. The companies paid $761,000 to settle the allegations. Five years later, the Justice Department returned with another complaint against Westlake, alleging that it had failed to provide service members with interest rate benefits they were owed under the law. The company paid $225,000 to settle that matter. Hankey companies have also been subject to regulatory actions by the CFPB and by the California Department of Insurance. According to a 2015 consent decree filed by the CFPB against Westlake and its affiliate Wilshire, the CFPB found that Westlake and Wilshire pressured borrowers using illegal debt collection practices. Some 176,000 customers were affected the consent order said. According to the CFPB, Westlake and Wilshire changed loan terms without telling borrowers, accruing additional interest on the loans. The companies also allegedly misled customers by manipulating caller IDs and posing as employees calling from flower shops or pizzerias to trick borrowers into disclosing their locations or their vehicles 
for repossession purposes. In other cases, Westlake collection agents led borrowers to believe that their vehicles would be released if they paid a certain sum, usually less than the full amount owed. Once those payments were made, Westlake did not release the vehicles, the CFPB found. Westlake and Wilshire neither admitted nor denied the findings, but paid $44 million to the customers and a $4.25 million penalty. Okay, friends, I'm going to stop there. But if you really want to know more about this hanky fella, go to his Wikipedia page. You know, you can read up on the, the misadventures of Don Hanky. And now, I don't know if he's got a partner named Panky, but I do know that with Judge Ngoron setting a hearing on April 22nd to pull back the curtain on this bond that Don Hankey gave to Donald Trump, $175 million bond, I'm quite sure that Attorney General Tish James and Judge Ngoron will get to the bottom of, you know, what this bond really involves, and they'll figure out whether the bond involves any financial, you know, hanky-panky. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.